What is going on, my online poker players? Now, I've got another good session to go over here where I was able to squeeze out a nice double up on a $200 cash game for only around 30 minutes of gameplay. And making money playing online poker is actually getting easier, in my opinion. I've just seen some of the craziest shit lately, and it's because people are playing way too many hands out of position when they should probably just fold in most spots. For example, if you're calling, you know, raises... Uh, if you're in the smaller big blind with hands like 6-2 suited or 3-8 suited, you should just fold those hands, okay? Just don't play them. Um, while I do think most of you watching this also need to add some bluffs in your game, you also don't necessarily have to do anything that crazy to be successful enough to making a few hundred dollars per day consistently. Sure, it's not going to be easy, but you know if you're playing two tables at a time for around 30-ish hours a week, you should have no problem making some decent money at these mid-state games as long as you're improving your game and making less mistakes when you're playing. And you could say, yeah, sure, buddy, but I post these sessions to show you guys that this really isn't that complicated. You don't have, you just need to have certain skill sets such as knowing when to three bet from late position, knowing when to make the right bluffs or laydowns, and most importantly, keeping that emotional self-control in check, which is usually the hardest part for everyone watching this because if you take a bad beat and that just kind of like ruins your whole mindset or maybe it ruins your day for whatever reason, then you're not going to play good poker. That's why the emotional part of this is it's the hardest part. And I've just learned to play through the pain. You know, if my aces get cracked to pocket jacks or something like that going all in and I lose, it's it doesn't even affect me. I'm like numb to it at this point. And that's kind of where you guys need to get with your game as well. Anyways, this session will once again be played on Ignition Poker, which is one of the main sites I play on all of the time. The software is excellent, and the games are fairly easy to beat at these mid-stakes. Of course, if you guys did want to get started here, there will be some bonus links you guys could check out directly below in the description and comments. You can also get on our poker newsletter where we send out one email a week on hand analysis and tips to help you make more money at the tables. Please tap that like and let's get into these hands. And stick around to the end. This is going to be a little bit of a shorter video because... You know, the session didn't last very long, okay? Um, and, you know, uh, you know, typically, like I always say, you know, my sessions are always under two hours. Um, but this one was really short. And, you know, you get a nice double up. And I'm not going to let you know what uh, – you just got to wait to see the hand. I'm not going to give anything away because, um, you know, it was one of those spots where we had to make a decision to kind of just call for bet or maybe just jam, you know? But it was also a hand that I was just never going to get away from. And, you know, the reality when you're playing, doesn't matter whether it's live poker, online poker, you're always going to have those uncomfortable decisions that you have to make. And you just got to roll with it, man. Sometimes you're going to get it right. Sometimes you're not going to get it right. But, you know, going with your gut, I feel like, too, um, you should listen to your gut sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Think about all the times where you're like, maybe you uh, you didn't make a call or something like that in a certain spot, you know, you just, you didn't want to risk the money and you weren't sure, but your gut was telling you to make that call. You guys should listen to your gut more when you're playing. I'm telling you. All right. Anyways, uh, I opted to fold this hand right here. I could have easily raised with this one. Um, but I just let it go. I was definitely playing a little bit of a tighter approach, um, in this session. So, but it's always different for me. You know, I always say this too, and something for you guys to think about as well. When you're sitting at a table for a little bit, you just pick up on player tendencies. Is everybody playing like super tight, aggressive? Are there some people just playing like maniacs, you know, just raising constantly? You, you just need to adjust your play to those players, right? If you're dealing with a, a table where everyone's just being like super aggressive, then you just want to kind of sit back and wait a little bit. And then the opposite's true. If everybody's playing like super passive, that's when you want to be more aggressive, a little bit more loose, um, you know what I'm saying? So that's just, uh, these are just some things to think about next time you guys play. That's, that's all I'm trying to get here. All right, we got the Jack Deuce of Spades. No dice there. All right, so this was an interesting hand. Um, King Jack suited. You know, obviously when this hand is suited, it's more of a... Uh, a three bet. Now we've got a small razor. Uh, you can see he raised it up to like four or something. And I hate when people do that, but I'm going to kick it up to like 17 or 18 here with this hand. couple of reasons why I'm doing this. Calling here 
could entice the big blind to call with some kind of like stupid hand. Um, and I'd rather just go heads up against one player. The other thing that could happen here is he just folds, we steal the blinds. But this hand is just, it's too strong to just call. Um, if you get four bet in, in this kind of spot, even with a king jack suited, depending on how big the four bet is, I don't know, guys. It's close, but I might still make a call with this hand because it's suited. Obviously, you don't want to be three betting like this with a king jack offsuit, but when these hands are suited, it just kind of changes the game a little bit. All right, anyways, um, he is going to make the call on us. And we're gonna we're gonna see a flop with it. Okay, not a good flop at all. We have no flush draws to go with this hand. Really, you know, looking for some kind of like miracle cards. Possibly well, I mean getting a pair on the turn would be good. Now, if he would have bet right there, I probably would have made a continuation call just to see a turn card because this flop was so bad. I mean, it's a two, six, ten couple of hearts out there but the turn card was really good for us um i decided just to check it though because if we can see a free card here and i'm not really sure where this guy is at because he did call our three bet but we got there on the river i put it in a value bet unfortunately we didn't get called right there and you know it is what it is we got super lucky on the turn and uh river card but even though we didn't have a flush try to go with the hand i just think that um in when you have the a king jack suit or even like a queen jack suited depending on the situation three betting usually makes sense you can really just isolate uh small small raise callers like if the smaller big line is going to call because they already have some money involved you don't want you want them to fold those stupid hands like six seven off suit um, and you really just want to like get better equity going heads up against one player or just stealing the blinds you know and like i said for getting four bet it can be tough. You have to make a decision at that point on how big the four bet is. But, you know, uh, queen jack suited, king jack suited, ace jack suited, those are all hands you should be um, really three betting with. When it's off suited, it's kind of different. But when it's suited, it, it just changes everything. Um, anyways, all right. So uh, is this is this our, our moment right here? Okay, here we go with the ace queen suited. Now we've got the ace queen of spades. I slowed this hand down just to really just go over what I was thinking here. Um, you know, the problem with ace queen a lot of the time, guys, is that, you know, if you're getting three or four bet, sometimes you're going to be up against kings, aces, ace king, which, you know, even when you're suited, it's still, uh, it's still hard, man. It, this hand can definitely be hard to play when you're dealing with those situations. And we did kind of have one of those situations here where I had to make a decision on what I wanted to do. And, you know, I, I played at this table, like I said, not very long, but I still had kind of a feel for how everybody was playing. Everyone was playing pretty tight, not not too not too loose or anything like that. But my, my gut was telling me, like, you know, when we're, we're basically going to be dealing with a, uh, a three bet here, my gut was telling me like something was off here. It just didn't feel right. Um, it was a pretty large three bed. He went to twenty four dollars. So, you know, if someone's going to do that, they're representing a big hand. I could think of aces, obviously kings. The problem is that I have an ace in my hand, so that the odds of him having pocket aces becomes a lot less likely. If you think about it like that, I mean, it does happen when you the guy does have pocket aces, but it's just a lot less likely because we have an ace. So I'm kind of ruling out aces at this point. Is ace king going to go to 24? I don't think so. So the hands that I was actually thinking that he could have, maybe mid pocket pairs that I could get to fold if I come over the top, maybe not. Um, but, you know, I decided, you know, we're going to make a stand here against this guy. It, it just, Something just seemed off. And that's why going with your gut sometimes is kind of like a, a good thing. Um, so that's why I'm going to, you know, come over the top on this guy and... Um, I think he's going to think about it a little bit before making the call. And uh, kind of interesting, really interesting here, because when he does make the call, um, I was pretty shocked at what he had. And I think you're going to be as well. You're going to be like, what? What is going on here? What is going on here? So, um, you know, get ready for this. 
you know, keep in mind too, I mean, he's still got $220 uh, behind here. So if he folds, he's not really losing a whole lot. And we take down, you know, his, you know, the chips for this one, which is, you know, totally fine. But, um, you know, I, I was glad I made this play because you could see that his hand obviously isn't that strong. If he's taking this long, he's going to make the call pocket nines. Now he's obviously ahead. Um, but look at this flop. You know, when you call a pocket, when a pocket pair calls you and you've got a hand like ace, king or ace, queen like this, but, you know, we spiked it on the turn. Um, percentage wise, though, uh, he did have us. That was a really interesting call. I, you know, when it when it comes to your whole stack, basically, like, I don't know, man, I, I'm not I'm never making that call. I think that's a bad play by him. It's easy to fold nines and three betting it to $24 doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. That line just doesn't make sense. There's so many hands that are beating him that that's just ridiculous. Uh, and, you know, he had some balls right there. I'll give him that. But that's not what you want to be doing. And um, like I said, my gut was just telling me like something just seemed off. So that's why I made that play. And we, we took down a nice pot and it just gave us a nice win for a pretty short session. I think I, at, right after I basically got this, I kind of was like, all right, um, I got other things to do. Uh, but I wanted to share this one with you guys because it was po it was from, you know, like over the weekend or whatever, one of them. Obviously, I'm always recording, like I always say. So I've just got like probably thousands of sessions. I mean, it never ends, guys. Uh, anyways, hope you enjoyed another one here. Um, subscribe if you haven't. Get on that newsletter. As always, thanks for watching this. And we'll see you on the next poker video.